so excited. <laughs> It's time for two guys and a goalie with Dustin Nielsen, Matt Cassian, and the goalie, Joaquin Gage. It's another edition of Two Mats and a Goalie for Two Guys and a Goalie. Matt Awanek, Joaquin Gage, Matt Cassian with you here. Uh, Zach to come. I think you're going to need to switch that camera a little bit to get Gager and the camera more and me out. I guess you could do that too. Do this. If I move over this way there too, we, we, we fit in that there shot a little better. All right, we're good there. there we're actually we go. good, Zach. You don't have to touch it Smarter all. Smarter than the average bear. Smarter than the average bear. Out. It's, uh, my gauge is a little close to the TV. I have a little room here and stuff. Tommy's not going to be happy, but Tommy's not here, so screw him. Yeah. He Cass, left. Cass, how are you doing today? Yeah. I'm good. I'm good. I'm on board with you with this whole screw Tommy thing. Yeah. Screw that guy. Why not? Yeah. Um, Why not? You need to get a little glass of whiskey because Gager and I are drinking a uh, bourbon. Yeah. We're having a little bit today, so just no, up, I just so. got, I just got my water going. Yeah. But uh, but you it's guys go ahead. You know, have it. one. <laughs> have one for me. We have. Yeah, uh, you're good. You're good. Gager's been drinking the uh, Chris Pronger, uh, Sean Pronger Journey yeah. one. Mm -hmm. And then one day you looked at me and it's like, "Where's the other stuff?" Because I had a couple of bottles in my office that are higher level. And we opened it up mm -hmm. last week, and then yeah, today you're just like Matt. What are we drinking? Like, <laughs> yeah, let's do I it. Was, you know, let's just say what you want. Both great hockey players, and it's uh, it, it's a uh, it's a middle of the road whiskey. I would say fine, but um, yeah, I just I, I saw what you had. Uh, I have had, some nice stuff. <laughs> he had some had some nice stuff in the back office, and just kind of, you know, when your your kids do this to you at this age, you'll you'll know this, Cass. Like it's the some some things you can learn from your children is. When they want something, they might just kind of go with the roundabout way of asking for it. That's essentially <laughs> what I did with Matt, with his uh, more uh, more elusive bourbon in the back. Office. Okay, well, yeah. I will say this, though. That, that stuff's been there for me for a few months. No one here, like, of the people that are regularly here at EST, Dusty's not drinking that stuff. Tommy doesn't seem like a guy that's drinking that stuff. I don't think Eric drinks that stuff. YTT's not going to understand that stuff. He's too young. So I have all the stuff there. I have it. And it's like, I'm not going to crack it open and drink it by myself. No. Fully. Now that it's open, I will. But I, so I like, you actually like freed me. Oh, you're to welcome. To open that. Ooh, you're welcome. So we could start drinking that one. And then there's the 15 year old scotch that's in there. Well, okay. And then we've got the beautiful Caribbean rum. Yeah. That we could get into one day. Well, Cassie, what, uh, what kind of, what kind of, yeah. Yeah. I mean, hey, I like, I like scotch and I like bourbon. Yeah. And it was, uh, it, it kind of, it was one of those things where it's like, I never liked them ever. And then for whatever reason, it was like one time I was like, fine, I'll have one. And I tried it and I was like, this is unreal. And it's just like my, my palate flipped all of a sudden on it to where, yeah, no, I, I love a good scotch. And good uh, Glenn like Fittich 15. That's what it is. Oh that yeah. We have. That's solid. It's that's solid. solid. Yeah. yeah. Nice. You're not going. Yeah. yeah. You're not, you are not messing around with that. There is, there is, you can have zero complaints. That is a nice Nice, nice whiskey. I will save that for when you're in. That's yeah. when I'll crack it open. You're in next. I'll crack it open for us, and we'll, we'll try that one. I'll do my best to to not get it done before then, Cass. I'll do my best. <laughs> the, the, the thing, <laughs> wine was the one for me that everyone always said it's an acquired taste, and I didn't like it. And now, give me a good glass of red. Oh, like I'm happy. I mean, the, I yeah. mean, eventually, I think this show can morph into uh, maybe a little tasting of of different liqueurs. With uh, with the pa with the interesting palettes, I mean, um, you know, Murray, uh, a connoisseur of the red wine, yes. he he could he could definitely have a little segment, I think, with uh, with the golf show. What to the but night? He's big hole. into it. He's he loves huge. He, he doesn't drink pretty much anything else. He's, yeah, he's like exclusive on red wine. He yeah. signed an exclusive yeah. lifelong deal with red wine. Yeah. And it's it's like so like I like red wine. Like if I have like a steak or something, like I I love 
I love they I love when you go to restaurants, they have good pairings with that sort of thing. Or like we've done like some, you know, special restaurant experiences before in our lives where it's like you have the chef that pairs, you know, you know a little bit of, of wine with the meal or whatever course. And that that I love. But I just I don't know enough. Like I can tell you the difference if I taste like a ten dollar bottle of wine versus like a twenty dollar bottle of wine. But getting me to tell you the difference for the most part between like a twenty to fifty dollar bottle of wine is like I I I don't have the palate for it because I just you know I'm not a I don't sip on stuff that often so it's like I just I don't know but uh, yeah someone like Murray is he's all in yeah I'm the one that just I just like the taste and I'll be like how is this it tastes good I don't know the <laughs> yeah. difference well me I'll, too yeah, yeah. Uh, glue guy um, him and his wife they just a couple of weeks ago when his store was closing Vaughn's Furniture they went out to celebrate that they went to the the liquor store near where they live not a big one so they got like the most expensive they could find which was only 85 bucks but 85 bucks and they bought a cheap one for like 10 bucks mm -hmm. and they got it poured for them because i told them like you should do a blind taste test can you notice the difference and they did it and they showed me the video they nailed it oh yeah they were able to figure yeah. out 85 to 10 which one was the more expensive which one yeah, wasn't so that's I, but with, they love the 85 with wine i i think anyone can really do that when you're going for that type of discrepancy what you said Cass, like the 10 to maybe 25 that might that might be a little bit more difficult but you can definitely do it with wine with whiskey though um when you look at the 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 whatever the 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 ratings of yearly whiskeys sometimes you see a a cheaper one win and i don't know all, yep. all it is but you can you can really get a, a good quality whiskey for a lower price yep. if you if you yep. kind of look at the spec the ooh, I forget what it's called. They have it out every year at bookstores that you can kind of look at and and mix and yeah, match. just the, the ratings. Yeah, yeah, the ratings. No, the ratings. I would. Uh, I will. I will. I will ahead. say though. So this is a this is a rookie party story. Um, <laughs> so we had our rookie party in Vancouver. Um, and there's a couple. Well, lots of things happened, but um, first thing that happened when we walked in the restaurant in Vancouver was that Danny Heatley ordered a $9,000 bottle of Dom Perignon. And I was just like, <laughs> what is going on? And the second thing that happened was Devin Setaguchi ordered a $3,500 bottle of Louis the Fourteenth Cognac. Wow. Um, and and to this day, to this day, it, it, I mean, it ends up being like 200 bucks a glass mm -hmm. for that Cognac. To this day, and, and that was before I was like, I'd liked bourbon and that sort of thing and again i'm not i'm not a drinker like i enjoy having a glass of red wine on occasion like a, a, a you know sipping on a thing a scotch or whiskey at the lake and to this day i still have not had anything that has been that good the fact that, that, that you that, can that, remember the 14th that, that you can remember how well that was it was the start of the <laughs> it was the start of the night um, <laughs> it was it was <laughs> It was really good. <laughs> it was really, really good. The other thing, you know what, what I want to say at some point that I'd, I'd like to try more because I've never really done it. Um, and so this is this is my uncle. Um, so my uncle, you know, my my cousin lives in the States, uh, married an American guy who has amazing stories. He's I, I love it's like my, my one of my cousins. You know, she dated a whole bunch of guys. And I kind of was like, man, eh, I didn't really like <laughs> any of them that much. Um, but the guy that she ended up marrying is just unreal he's like my favorite person um but anyways they were up visiting and they're not here very often because they live in california and so we went over there like to see them to see the whole family like the whole family was getting together uh, and my uncle has been really into really high quality tequila Ooh, and yeah. and i'm not i'm not a tequila guy but it, we're, we're talking like the when you get into the good you're stuff, not making margaritas with this it stuff. tastes good yeah like it way more expensive than i would ever like dream of paying myself to buy a bottle but either like everyone was having one so i'm like yeah sure i'll sit with you guys and have one and that too that that was up there in terms of being like man this is this is so just the taste of it because it's like there's no burning you don't like there's not an alcohol taste it's like just flavor to it and you're just like wow unbelievable anyways we could talk about hockey but <laughs> well, yeah. i'm like in this or, chat uh two birds one stone scott laura in the nasty chat dalmore 12 is a great one Balvini, Doublewood, and Oban is my personal fave. Oban, Oban, yeah, yeah. Thank you. The um, 
the, back in the day, I my first introduction. I can't believe we're talking about this. This should, this is the the because you shop. can't. I'll say this: you can't <laughs> talk about with this Dusty because Dusty would have no idea what yeah, you're yeah. talking about. But, you guys could talk yeah. about your Marvel stuff with him. With me, we're talking about liquor. When when I was dominating the uh, the English league, Oban wasn't far away. The oh, actual yeah? distillery, and so we were going to go. I I'm kicking myself that we didn't. But the the uh, the rumor was in the past that the the distillery burnt down because Oban it was kind of a it was a very good introductory to 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 scotch it was it was mild smooth really nice and it went from a $35 bottle to the rumors that it had burnt down and there was only a limited supply left to about 85 to 90 and it became a really popular scotch but they were just fine it was just a rumor that they put out to to boost the yeah, cost, try to but, sell more. Yeah, yeah but the Balvenie's funny. unreal. the the double The double cast is is awesome. Uh, Scott knows his stuff. He's a yeah, he's a connoisseur. Yeah, but, I'd, yeah. I'd be interested to ask Scott because it, it's one of my on, on the bourbon side because I probably like bourbon more than Scotch. Is the um, there's a I think they they just run them. They have a couple different years, but the the ten year Eagle Rare Kentucky Straight Bourbon is one of the for price point was like one of the best that i have tried i just i thought that one was absolutely fantastic and it was still cost effective enough like you could do it in old fashioned if you want yeah um but just really nice to sit by itself too like really versatile that would be that would be one of my favorites so i'd be interested to see if scott had tried that one maybe he'll jump in the nasty chat here and uh we'll, we'll have to will. find it we'll have to find another game to get to the hudson's one of them the three of us and and have a a nice bourbon or a scotch during an Oilers game, just to, to continue this discussion during that Oilers game. But uh, let's talk a little hockey now. Oilers, Coyotes yesterday. Um, what did you guys make of the end of the Coyotes game? Like, and, and seeing what you saw with the fans and what everyone believes is coming. I think 1 o'clock is the Board of Governors call that's going to happen today where it's going to then seemingly be official where Ryan Smith will take over this franchise, yeah. move him to Utah, Salt Lake. Um, Cass, I'll start with you. What did you just make of, of that game last night and, and everything around yeah. that game? Not not necessarily what happened, you know, on the ice. Well, I mean, it, it was, I'm, I'm certain just very bittersweet for people. And, and it looked that way too. And one of the, I guess, most touching things for me, um, and they, you know, you didn't get to see all of it. You kind of started to see the parade of guys going, um, uh, up to Stan um, and giving him the hug after. Um, yeah, that that for me, for someone that's been at the organization for just for, for since its beginning and going back to the Winnipeg days, um, that to me was a big moment. Um, you know, I uh, I had a chance, I guess, like, so Stan's son, Dallas, um, was one of the equipment guys in um, in Minnesota or in Houston when I was there. Um, awesome, awesome guy. And then, you know, I had a little bit of experience with Stan Wilson, uh, who is, the, again, the Coyotes equipment manager in Arizona when I was there for camp. And um, just a quality individual and inc- incredibly, incredibly respected around the league. Um and just seeing the emotion on his face, knowing what was coming, and and all the players going up and just giving him big hugs, um, that to me is like it again. Like I, I think the organization will be in a better place than it is right now by being in Salt Lake. But it just reaffirmed the human element of it to me, where it's just like there's there's people inside that organization that have been there for a long time that are either going to have to move or move on, and um, and it, it's a little sad. It's a, it's a little sad. The human element of it is is sad. I mean, we, we can make fun of them playing at Mold Arena. We can do all the things, make fun of how they haven't been very good for a very long time and all the challenges that the Coyotes have had. But the human element to it is that there's still people that have, have made a living, that have poured their life into this to, to try to have success and to try to do the best they can. Um, and it's a chapter closed for them. And that that to me is is sad. And you see fans too, where it's like there are fans that have been committed and we're committed for a long time, and and it's it's hard for them too. It's sad. This is, you know, they 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 poured their emotion and their finances into supporting this team, um, and now it's moving on. So I don't know. I just I just think about the human element to it um, more than anything, guys. Yeah, no. It, it, there's so many other 
factors that go into this team leaving. And I mean, it was, <laughs> we talked about them moving to this rink. What happens if they would have made the playoffs? You know, like that's. It'd the, have been one of the best atmospheres for playoffs <laughs> I think there was. It, I mean, but you can't, like the, the fact that the, the revenue sharing that they're getting by on this for so, so long, I, I would love to see the, uh, the owners' meetings of them being upset about this whole situation, and like you said, guys, I think they're going to a to a better place, um, a place where you know there's there's the possibility of growth is a probably a little bit better. Um, but yeah, it, I mean, this has affected so so many people. Just the move to Mullet itself has yeah. has affected so many people, right? From from Scottsdale or, or uh, Glendale, Glendale for that one, and. Um, but it was time. It, it was finally time to do something. It couldn't. It couldn't keep going like this. Uh, this is uh, two guys and a goalie. Big and hot headlines brought to you by Big Mama and Pe- uh, Mamas and Pe- Papas at Pizzeria BMPP is a real pizzeria restaurant. There's not a delivery pizza chain serving authentic Italian cuisine with their made in house pizza dough, traditional tomato sauce, and fresh toppings. Each pizza is cooked to perfection. A pizza experience you've been waiting for. Visit them at one two eight four eight ninety seven Street. Order today. BMPP.ca or call 587-746-0550. I guess when it comes to the Coyotes, like I feel for everyone that's involved, fans and, and people that have worked for it, but then you also have the story yesterday where Shane Doan's presented his retirement oh. banner because it was thrown away. <laughs> yeah. That in the move yeah. from Glendale to Mullet, the Coyotes didn't grab Shane Doan's retirement banner. <laughs> And it was thrown in the trash and some fan grabbed it and thankfully saved it and it was able to present it to Shane. Like, how do you allow that to happen as an organization? And, and like the people at the very top that were running this, just a disaster. And that needs to change. Oh, what a night. Like, shouldn't, I mean, I know they don't play there, but shouldn't it go in the Suns arena in some respect? Like, I mean, we have a Garth Brooks banner. You never oh, you're saying it. keeping it like it should stay in the it city somewhere? It should stay in the city. Like, well, he, you could keep it at Mullet, I guess, if you want, because they've been playing there. I guess. Uh, That's not good. You Montreal. could put it at the Ice Den, too. They might rebrand it, but like, there's places you could put it. Come on, man. That's that's. I just don't know how you let that... Like, How do you not even store that somewhere? Like, uh, Maybe you don't put it up in Mullet somewhere. How do you just let that be thrown away? That's crazy. Right, that's... It's nuts. That was a that's a that's a bad look. That one. Yeah. It, well, it was it was great to see Shane Doan's face when he was present. Like he was, he was so happy. And his his house, he's probably got ceilings high enough where he can actually hang it in the living room, which is great. But um, that's where I'd have mine <laughs> for sure. But yeah, I, I I thought it was like, oh, that's great. They're giving that to him. But I'm like, then I'm. That, that's Why is so it being weird. given to him this way? You imagine giving. You know, I mean, this is absolutely ridiculous. But say. Giving Glenn Anderson his his banner because the it was left at Rexall. It was left at Rexall. We like, didn't bring it over to Rogers because yeah. who cares? No, not, not just left at Rexall, thrown in the away. trash. Right, right. Yeah, yeah, Rexall. yeah. Just come well, and on. even if you're the rink, why would you just keep that up? Even if you're that new rink or not the new, like that you're old. Yeah. Rink, what's the big deal of getting rid of that, if you will? Yeah, it, it's a history I, thing. Like, it's your city. Whatever. Uh, Scott Laurie did jump in quickly. Uh, great call, Matt. I am relatively new in the bourbon game. I enjoyed the Elijah Craig. Not crazy price, but good. So he's with you on that one. Um, for the Oilers, do we talk <laughs> about the game at all? Or do we just focus no. on how did Bill... Phil- okay, well then I'll just go with this. How did Philip Broberg play to you? Uh, he, he was okay. You know, gets a nice assist. It was a... You know, Fogel did most of the work on that one, but you know, a nice couple steps and moves a puck up ice, which was good to see. Um, I was a little concerned until I realized that that puck went off the ref's skate. Um, I pointed this out to Tommy in the post game show. One thing I didn't like from Broberg on that play is that he pivoted to the outside of the rink instead of pivoting to the inside. Because if you pivot to the inside, you, you're facing the puck the whole way. You would have seen that it bounced to the middle and you would have been in a better position to make a play on it. Um, now he pivots to the outside. And because he pivots to the outside, you know, your, your, your back is to the puck the whole way. So you're having to turn around and then refine where the puck is as opposed to being able to see it um, and know where the play is going. Um, so it wasn't a huge, huge fan. With that being said, it's a, it's a weird play. So I'm not going to overly harp on him for it. But yeah, he was, he was all right. He was okay. Um, you know, the team didn't play very well and didn't put a ton of effort in, which I don't really care about. Uh, but I thought I thought Broberg was fine. He didn't look like a guy that should play top four minutes in the playoffs. I can tell you that much. 
Um, but uh, but he was okay. Great, great point, Cass. It, uh, yeah, because looking at that, I'm like, what is he doing? I, and I understand anticipating the play, but you never want to turn your lose sight nope. of the puck in that situation, especially in your own zone. You want to know where it is. And, uh, well, and protect the middle of the ice. You should be, yeah. you know, generally speaking, the rule for defensemen is you pivot to the, like you, you open up. When you open up, you open up to the middle so that you're protecting the middle of the ice first because that's the dangerous part of the ice. Well, it's even, uh, I equate it, if you look at it, the same kind of a way a goaltender would look at it. When the puck, a guy with the puck going behind the net, you don't, you follow him on your inside shoulder for as long as possible until he gets out of reach and then you then you switch to the other side because you want to keep in case he cuts back or anything you want to keep him in in sight for as long as possible until you have to actually turn your head and and locate the puck right you want to always and that's kind of the same thing puck gets dumped in it can hit something or hit the hit the glass and go the other way you definitely want to be turning to the inside just to that's a moment where I think Broberg will go, God, I, I'll never do that again. You know, it's just, it was, you could see it on the look on his face. He goes, God, that was terrible that that happened. But yeah, that's a, that's a good teaching moment. This is Two Mats and a goalie edition of Two Guys in a Goalie right here on Edmonton Sports Talk on iHeartRadio. Tune in, EdmontonSportsTalk.com, as well as uh, for those watching on YouTube. Reminder, GCL Diesel pregame show later tonight uh, as the Oilers get set to take on the Avs. Game 82 for both those clubs. Uh, Tom Gazzola, YTT, Matt Cass, and they'll get you set for the game 6 o'clock right here on Edmonton Sports Talk. Um, we were talking about it, about it a little bit on the Hangout. Is it, how did you word it? This these game like the game between the Vancouver and Edmonton back at Rexall, the oh the peace treaty. Is there a chance of a pre- peace treaty tonight between <laughs> yeah, the Abs and the Oilers? So, yeah, I'm interested to see. Well, both teams like who who's not dressing. Um, like it could be pretty depleted lineups on both sides, and and there is going to be a little bit of a peace treaty. Now, it, if Colorado was still vying for that home ice advantage, it'd be totally different. Okay, but Gager but pointed not. out that between these two teams, there's still the fight. They're, if the Oilers win tonight, yeah, they could pass yeah. the Avs and have home ice in a potential conference final meeting. But I, I Does don't that think, matter? Are you, more worried, are you more worried about that? Or are you more worried about not getting hurt? Yeah. Like in wanting to be healthy? Like, I think you're more worried about being healthy now maybe they're you know i think from a coaching standpoint that's going to be your message is going to be like hey there's still playoff positioning on the line here but i mean what are you truly communicating if you're if you're addressing gagne which i hope they do if you're dressing ernie which i hope they do if you're dressing broberg if you're dressing stetcher probably I, i'm going to assume here at this point that it's it's you know you're going to rest two regular defensemen and a whole bunch of your forwards like, are you communicating this to them that that's what's important? Home ice is important, or is it just being ready for the playoffs important? So, I don't know, guys. I I think there's going to be a little bit of a peace treaty tonight, but maybe I'm wrong. Maybe it just turns into a bloodbath. But I, I just think that the the Avs aren't the same team as a couple of years ago, right? I don't, and I don't really think that it's if if that's the Avs team two years ago and the same situation arises where look we could play these guys in the conference final then i think you see the oilers ice everyone and try to get it at that point but i i think the they're confident enough to i would be confident enough to think that the edmonton oilers could beat the colorado avalanche in a seven game series without having home ice advantage at this point so to me i'm with you Cass. it's way more important to have everyone healthy feeling good ready for game 83 how often do these peace treaties happen? Are they more common than we we'd expect? In the American League, they well, were back in the day. They were uh, they were a regular occurrence. Were they? Oh my god! Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That Atlantic Division, because we'd go into the Rock or St. John's, and we'd play like two games there. And so, the like our captains, and I won't mention names, but you know, we'd get in there on the Thursday and maybe play on the Saturday. So Thursday. Would be, you know what? Okay, let's go hard Saturday. Or no, it was Thursday. Take it easy. We got two games here. We'll play, you know, Saturday, go all out. Then we'll all meet up on, on George Street Saturday night for before we uh, and, and have a good time. But it was, 
Yeah, there was a lot of peace. Depending on the situation in the season, there was a lot of peace tre- treaties negotiated between the captains of each team. How does this like? Who, how does it come up? Like, did you guys just text each other? Like, did you like? Is there it was the coaches? No back then. Well, there's there's no coaches? Like, back then. How do you like negotiate this type thing? <laughs> it was just I'm just so fascinated by this because I never, it was I never thought like you as a joke you'd maybe like, no one would care. I didn't think it actually would go on where the teams would talk about it. Oh no! And I told you the the yeah. last game at Rexall, there was a bat, home at home with the Canucks, and I I heard from a from a viable source that talked to the Sedins and. During warm up, and said, "We'll give you this one, okay? But you give us the one." So it's the players generally. Oh yeah, it's the yeah. players. Yeah, look, we'll we'll go we'll go at a certain level, um, but you guys make sure you take like don't. What if the Canucks won that game? Well, like no. what if like like the Oilers went and the Canucks barely tried, but they still somehow win that game. Does it like the only way the Oilers the... go hard the next, or is that just never going to happen? No, the 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 Oilers would have really had to lay an egg and tried to embarrass the other team to certain points you know there's there's things <laughs> that you can do and uh yeah and you if you look at it the next game the the canucks look like world beaters and the the oilers were you know 65 percent. this fascinates me i love that it happens too though <laughs> like it's just but sometimes it's not even talked about sometimes i i feel you just like no yeah it's you just know Right, like it's just like an expectation. Now, I would have it different for me. The the peace treaties were more on an individual level, where there's sometimes where it's like your body's so beaten up, and you're like, dude, I, now I, there's some people that would be good for it, and some not. Where you'd be like, dude, like, please don't be an idiot tonight. Like, my body's banged up. Like, my hands <laughs> hurt. My shoulders hurt. Like, if you do something stupid, you know I'm gonna fight you. Please just don't do something stupid because I need a night off. And uh, and there's some guys who'd be like, okay, like, and they they take that seriously, and they. They'd be legit with it. And then there's some guys where it's like you tell them that and then they'd still be idiots. And, and the biggest example of that would be Francis Lassard when he was in um, uh, when he's in San Antonio. Because you play him like eight times a year. And um, it was like game seven against him. And my body was just a wreck at that point. And then it, it, they started Francis's line. So my line started. So I lined up across from him at the start of the game. And I just looked and I said, Francis, like I really don't want to have to fight you tonight you know i will he's like if, like if you do something stupid i'm just gonna jump you so just don't like just don't please don't and he muttered something because you get such a thick accent you couldn't really ever understand <laughs> what he was saying and i'm pretty sure his chin strap because he had like a leather chin strap and he had it always cinched up so tight that he could barely talk anyways because it was just like a muzzle almost and um that first shift he tried to take a run at me and i jumped him going back to the bench like he they, literally the first shift like in the defensive zone i had to drop down low for whatever reason defenseman passed me the puck i just hear our bench everyone on the ice screaming heads 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 because you always did that whenever francis was on the ice and with him it's like all you had to do is step two feet to the side and he'd miss you because he couldn't turn he was really fast in straight lines but he couldn't you know wasn't overly agile in adjustments and so i heard everyone stepping so i stepped to the side you know he stuck his leg out missed me so he took a straight up run at me and then i just jumped him on the way back to the bench because i was just like okay so guys like that you couldn't but there was somewhere it was just like okay you they respect you enough and you respect them enough like luke gazdick would be an example on the other side of it where because we played again when he was in um when he was in austin for dallas's farm team you play them same thing a whole bunch of times where i was like luke like I can't tonight, dude. Like, just keep it between the rails. Play hard, but don't be an idiot. And he he was he was good with that kind of stuff. Um, but yeah, so so my experience with it was less on the and you had team games like that, but more on the personal level. Well, sometimes where you just like you tried to have little truces for a, a day or two because your just body couldn't handle it. Uh, yes, the flyaway keyword coming up in about ten minutes time or so, right here on Two Guys and a Goalie. Uh, I want to jump in to the nasty chat, Matt Awanik, Walking Gage, and Matt Casting with you here, Smitty the Welder. Uh, let's talk about this brutal schedule here for the first two games of the playoffs, Monday and Thursday. Really, one report where Tommy's been saying for a while now that the Oilers will start on Monday, um, the opening round series. Uh, heard a report potentially also Thursday for Game Two, so the Oilers will play tonight, then they play monday get a couple days off play thursday do you guys like that start for the oilers or would you rather like historically it's every second day type thing you're playing in the playoffs so right away you get you start and then you get two days off and then you're back at it uh gage did you have an issue with that type of schedule 
I would if it didn't end the way it does. Like having these two back to back games, I, I like the fact that it's pushed to Monday to Thursday. I think the Oilers are a little bit banged up right now. That extra day in there kind of, I think, might be necessary. And then going to the, after that, I I would like to see them get into that rhythm of every second day. But I, I don't have a problem with it, actually, to tell you the truth, Manny. Cass? Yeah, I don't, I don't either. Like, why, why would that be an issue? It's not like it's six days or seven days in between games. Like, if if it's three in between your first, that's fine. And then if you have two after that, that's okay. Like, it's not. I don't know. It's not. It's, I get it's it from like a fan perspective. Yeah. I get it from a fan perspective. Oh, well, of, we want to watch plays. Going, we yeah. want to watch going. To me, I, I do look at it and go, "There's not a lot of taste off in playoffs. If you could snag an extra day off, and I don't care if it's at the beginning of the playoffs." I think that's better for your team because once yeah. the playoffs yeah. gets going, it's the only other time really it's, you get breaks is when you finish a series and hopefully you finish a series earlier than the other team and they're finishing playing the re- finishing up their series yeah. and you get a few extra days there. But beyond that, like you don't get time off. So if you're getting no. ready for what is generally the toughest playoffs in all of sports physically, you know, you can argue then, and, you know, you, t- you take that day and you, you, Again, I get as a fan, like, I want this going, but I think you also should look at it as a fan and go, this is better for the team to stay fresh. Yeah, and there's a, there's, it's a fine line, too, I think. You don't want it to be too long. Because if you look back to last year, I don't know about you guys, but I think the um, – although when the injury report came out, it, it did seem to be a little bit more necessary, but – didn't the Panthers have like a week and a half off before they played the Knights? Well, I, I was actually, it's funny because of the hango. I said, me and Tommy said we didn't want to talk about this, but you go back to 06. <laughs> um, <laughs> the Oilers knocked off the Ducks in five. Uh, Sabres and Hurricanes, I think, went seven. Yeah. And the Oilers had to wait a little bit longer. And, and they got off to a great start in game one, but then they faltered. And you wondered, did they not have the, the full, mm. weren't ready to go for the full 60 minutes type thing? So is there a little bit of that rust that, Builds up. I think three days max. Yeah, three days is great. Anything more than that, you kind of fall out of that that rhythm, and you're almost feeling out the game again. Especially a team that's gone through a battle of six or seven games. They're they're ready to roll, and you just got to get back up to that intensity. I think you can. It's hard to keep that intensity with through practice over a longer period of time. Cass, what's the hardest part about? sitting for long enough like b- between games for for these teams if it is like gager said like you're waiting a week or whatever to play what's the hardest part about getting yeah. back into the lineup and, and been playing those games as a team yeah well especially since the playoffs you, you know you're not you practice game like situations but it's never the same mm-hmm. it's never the same the contact's never the same the energy expenditure is never the same and so you're trying to stay sharp and you're trying to stay fresh but there's a reason that hockey is sloppy at the start of a season even coming out of training camp it it takes you know, there, and and I and I had you know old my old uh, GM Scott Bonner in Vancouver. Um, actually, maybe it was his brother Craig Bonner who was the assistant coach there. They called me the worst Monday morning practice player ever because it's like you you play Friday Saturday, you have Sunday off, and then it's just like you're off. You can't make a pass on Monday because it's like you you rested for a day and you weren't on the ice. And for for games, it's kind of the same thing where you're so used to being on the ice every day and to, to playing games every second day that staying in that game playing mode, you just, you're, you're crisp, you're fresh mentally, you're crisp, you're fresh, you're, you're, you're used to game pace, you're used to game pressure. And if you have a big break from that, it's not like you forget, but it's just different. Practices are just different. The level of intensity is intense as you can try to have your practices. It's just going to be different. And that's where it can, it can, you know, the, the rust versus, um, you know, rest conversation comes in where where it's important to have a balance of, you know, rest but not be too rusty. And for most guys, they probably would agree with you, Gager, where it's like two days, okay, three days, okay, anything more than that. And all of a sudden it's like I'm itching to play yeah. again. I'm bored of practices. And it's just like y- you lose a little bit on that the being used to game intensity side. And practices suck at this point, this time of year. No, it's – you don't want to do that. You want to play. You want to play games. It, it for no, you. Manny, you want to do f- a couple flow drills. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. It would be like, uh, would you rather play golf or just go to the driving range? 
you know, like. Well, so, I, the, the year I did the most rounds of golf, <laughs> me and my buddy, we we would every so often, anytime we planned a driving range session, we'd be like, let's let's just do a range. We get to the course, see how empty it is. Like, you just want to do a round? Yeah, let's do a round. Yeah, let's go play the yeah, round. Because exactly, who wants to be on the range? Even though yeah. that's where you you get better. You can work on you some things. You just want to go play. You just want to go have yeah. fun. So, but now at the beginning Same. of the season, you want to go to the range. Yeah. You want to go to the putting green. But you know, come late August, are you going to hit a bucket of balls? No, if you're you're getting to the first tee at the ranch. Speaking my language right there. <laughs> Speaking my love language right there. Uh, <laughs> let's get to the EST flyaway keyword. Uh, funny enough, I think I have the right one on the screen now. I do. I actually uh, put this on a little bit earlier by accident during the show, and only two people caught in and texted in right away. <laughs> oh, perfect. And only two people were able to jump in the queue a little bit earlier. Our EST flyaway keyword, uh, Two uh, nonstop flights to Las Vegas, three nights accommodations, tickets to Cirque, thanks to our partners. Fly YEG, uh, over 50 nonstop flights from Fly YEG uh, to various destinations around the world. Your sports strips uh, starts with Fly YEG. Check them out, flyyeg.com. Or our Vegas partners, the LVCVA. The keyword for today on two guys and a goalie, Barbashev. Barbashev. Of the Golden Knights, B A R B A S H E V. Barbashev, text it to 780 218 9999. Zach Tickham will give someone a call in about uh, 10, 15 minutes time or so. Uh, but get in that right now. Barbashev to 780 218 9999. That is your keyword for today here on Two Guys and a Goalie for the EST Fly Away. Uh, one of the mem many members of the Golden Knights who uh, potentially will be taking on the Edmonton Oilers. We'll find out tonight as uh, the Golden Knights, they get the Ducks while the Kings get the Blackhawks. I think the Golden Knights have to win no matter what, and they clinch Oilers Golden Knights first round series. If the Golden Knights lose in any fashion and the Kings win, then I think it's the Kings that the Oilers will face. Uh, do you guys think it matters for the Edmonton Oilers who they face in this first round? Yeah, it, it matters because I I think the well, well I think they beat the Kings, uh, but I'm I'm still I think it's a harder it's a harder test against the Golden Knights, but I th they're going to have to do it at some point. So why not get it over with? Well, I will say that I I think it where to uh, just to add on to your point is if you don't get the Golden Knights in the first round. You get the Kings, but then you also only have to meet potentially one of the Stars, Avs, or Golden Knights. And I'll throw the Jets in there. Whereas if the Golden Knights come to your division and the Oilers have to take on the Golden Knights, not only do you have to knock off the Golden Knights, then you have to knock off at least one of Stars, Avs, Jets to get to the Stanley Cup Finals. Load up the Central, keep the Pacific a little bit lighter. That's the way I would look at it. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Again, I, it, it's not going to be easy against the Kings, but I do I do think it suits up well for the Oilers. They've been able to break down their style of play, which is which is very hard to do. There was only there was one game and I think it was the Oilers won in a shootout um in LA. And the it was it was it in November? I think it was and the, the Kings were were dominant in the first period. They were four checking. Oh, I remember this. It game. was it was like, oh my gosh, this this Kings team looks amazing, and um, and then they after that first period, and I think they were up a goal or or maybe two at that point, and then they just went back into their own system and allowed the Oilers to start feeling good about their game, and they just kept coming. And it wasn't. It was a different Oilers team that I'd seen in the past where they were just trying to get back into the game every single shift. They actually took their time to to kind of break down the Kings and, and ended up tying it, getting into overtime, getting to the shootout and winning. I think that was one of the... December 30th. Yeah. 3-2 shootout win. The Kings had two first period goals. The Oilers tied it up in the second and they won 3-2 in the shootout. It, I think Skinner, Skinner played really well that game unreal. too, if I'm not mistaken, early on. Yeah. Yeah. And that was, I think that was, yeah, that was a, that was a turning point, a little galvanizing moment for the Oilers, realizing that uh, they could play against the Kings, even though they, they, they play that. So I was more, why would the Kings stop playing the way they did in that first period? Like they're a good, 
they were a good skating, fast, hard forward checking team, and then just went back into that trap. And I don't, I didn't understand it. And that that's the only reason the Oilers were able to come back in that game. Kings or Golden Knights? Who do the Oilers match up better against? Is it just obvious that it is the Kings? I, I think from a matchup standpoint, I think they match up better against the Kings. But you're going to have to beat good teams the whole way through, regardless of who you're playing. You're playing good teams. The West is tough. The West is tough. Like it's like if you're not if you're not playing Vegas in round one, if you play LA, it's possible that you play them in round two, or you're playing Vancouver, who also is a very tough out. So it's like you're not you're not getting any easy teams. There's no you know a team that just squeaked in where you're like ah oh, yeah they just squeaked in and they kind of were average all year team. It's like even 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 with um, even with Nashville where you're like. Yeah, Nashville played incredibly well down the stretch. So, like, I don't know. I, I don't think you care. I think your your mindset is, I just got to beat whoever from a purely matchup standpoint. Yeah, probably matchup slightly better against the Kings. Um, I, I still like their chances if it is Vegas. I think Aiden Hill struggles and, and the goaltending struggles of the Golden Knights. If Aiden Hill doesn't flip a switch and all of a sudden start playing really well, I, I – tilt the ice to Edmonton's favor. Um, but uh, you're going to have to be good teams the whole way. So who cares? But yeah, maybe advantage Edmonton a little bit more so in the uh, in an LA Edmonton matchup, but who cares? <laughs> I say that now. If yeah. they lost in the first round and they played Vegas, then I'll be singing a different tune. That's for sure. It's weird that there's only West teams playing tonight. Like, yeah. I don't know. I, I, the scheduling is just a little weird to me in, in this. But uh, it, it, for anyone that is going to want to watch Scoreboard Watch tonight, Oilers have 7.30. Ducks Vegas is at 8. Chicago LA at 8.30. Um, so as you're watching the Oilers game, we'll, we'll keep, the eye will be kept on that Vegas game. And depending what happens there, if the Ducks could pull off that major upset, then uh, all eyes on at Kings uh, and Blackhawks. I uh, want to quickly go to last night a little bit. Uh, Austin Matthews ends his season 69 goals. Shame that he didn't get seventy. Well, you got to look guys? at you got to look at this season as a failure for Austin Matthews, don't you? That's uh, <laughs> no, I don't I don't know. Like sixty nine is pretty pretty good season. Um, I think some ugh. people would argue that they'd rather end on sixty nine, so they would always just make the joke. They'll make the joke. Yeah, that's good. Um, yeah, I don't know. I mean, he he hit a couple crossbars, I think, last night too, right? Like it was it was kind of funny seeing. Uh, seeing him try to score. He still got opportunities and the other team knowing that he's going to be a shooter and still get that many attempts was funny. Um you know, I I, I watched the the post game interview with him and he was he was perfect in that interview. He was honest. He goes, "Yeah, I, I'm upset I didn't do it." You know, I this was a I it would have been nice to to get done, but almost to the, you know, he was saying that this is a uh, this is over and now it's all about team success. He's he's saying the right things, although he's a little bit disappointed, and you know he has to have this same type of goal scoring prowess if they want to even come close to to winning in a round. So um, yeah, and I mean it would have been nice to see another guy hit seventy. We've seen two guys get to a hundred assists to see another guy score seventy goals. Um, I I think it's pretty cool for the league overall. I think it would have been well, better for Ka- for him to score 70 because I think Connor McDavid oh, yeah. then would have taken it next year. And nah. been, I'm going to beat that. So he's not going to sit there. Yeah, he's, he's done it before. Yeah. I, I think, yeah. it's 69, whatever. Maybe maybe the, the motivation for McDavid next year will be I'll be the one that hits maybe. 70. But if, if Matthews know. did 70, I, I could see McDavid going next year and be like, yeah, I'll show you. Nah, he did that last nah, year. He maybe. went out. He got his goals, and he got the, the rocket Richard and all that. I guess like if if Matthews gets seven, everybody talks about it. I could see McDavid being like, "I'll show you next year." <laughs> yeah, maybe. Just get seventy five, maybe. maybe. I'm sure because they yeah, work I'm out just, in the summer a little bit exactly. too, right? So I could see the a little bit. Yeah. Oh, you didn't do it. Watch this. <laughs> Better for the Oilers. <laughs> maybe. Yeah, maybe. I'm just I'm happy that it's uh, local Edmonton product, Matt Tompkins, that uh, that stopped it from happening. Perfect. Sherwood Park Crusader, ex Sherwood Park Crusader. Yeah. Nice. I didn't even know that. Yeah. Shoot. Yeah. Cool. Yeah. Uh, we're local a few guy. minutes away from quali- uh, qualifying some for the EST Flyaway. We- we've done we've done a lot of liquor talk today. We've done a lot of hockey talk today. Um, it's at the end of the season. There's not a lot of hockey left. I I do got to go into the 
the Paris Jewelers inbox, 780-289-9999. Uh, Deaky Sparks, could we get an insight on Chinese Grand Prix? Two guys in F1, analysts for a minute maybe. Um, I, I do mm. think we have to look to this this F1 Grand Prix this weekend. And well, I think what the, do we think is going to happen here? Well, if you're is talking Cass about going to continue dominating the top of our F1 fantasy league. It's dominant. Bernard Salas dominant. today was in, and he looked at us and he says, "Like Cass has won this already, hasn't he?" Well, it depends. Is Cass? Commission no, didn't think you so. Yet. Commission I mean, didn't think so. This is where the the lack of a better term, the rubber really hits the road on sprint weekends, right? Because Cass, you could really uh, put us in your rearview mirror, or you could uh, you could come back to the pack, so to speak, with some some yeah, ill-advised but, choices yep. because the sprint weekend does, in fantasy anyway, is the most points uh, that you can gain, but also the most points you can lose. So, um, but looking at the the track in China, another racetrack setting, there are some interesting hairpins where. Red Bull has shown with this car that they are very highly successful with this tra- this type of track so far in this short season. So I can't, I don't see anything really changing. Um, but it's throughout the other lineup. What's Mer- where's Mercedes going to be with this with uh, with this type of track and just a little bit different from Japan? Um, I look to to McLaren actually possibly uh, being a little bit better than Ferrari at this at this really? uh, this race just the way the track and how it's gone so far but um qualifying's tonight uh the no the, it's not or it's yeah it is saturday at 1 a.m no i mean practice first practice yeah no free practice is in eight hour 41 yeah, minutes yeah so and uh, then sprint shootout is at 1 30 tonight I, yeah i will and put then out sprint the race is at 9 p.m tomorrow and then qualifying is at 1 a.m on saturday and then the race is 1 a.m on sunday I'll put out a, a video after free practice one so everyone can hopefully get their picks in before one thirty. What are you going to do with your picks, Cass? Just you want to let everyone know so we can try to plan uh, around I may it? Have already, may have already switched around things a little bit. Um, <laughs> what chip say, did I think, you play? I think... <laughs> I can't remember. Um, I can't remember if I did or if I didn't. Um, I may have played one. I may not have played one. <laughs> But I, what I will say is I think, you know, largely this race will, from a fantasy standpoint, is going to hinge on the bottom end of the lineup. Yeah. You know, there's been there's been some bottom ends that have done well and some of the, the lesser teams that, that haven't. And um, you know, what will be interesting to me from a fantasy standpoint, because I'm like, like I'm in management mode here, guys, like because I have a good lead. I'm like, just don't do anything stupid. Don't do anything stupid. You're, you're protecting your it, tires it between the rails. Yeah, you're protecting your yeah. tires. So you protect. Yeah, you're just being you're just being smart with it. But at the same time, I'm like, OK, well, how can I stretch this lead? Just because even from a team value standpoint, it's like I, I you know, I, I don't get to see where everyone else is at. You can kind of get a general idea. But I'm like, OK, I think of from a team value standpoint of probably increased a, a, a fair amount more than other people to where I'm you know, going to start to get to a point where I can start to slot in even better and better drivers and still fit underneath my, uh, my cap. Um, Jeez, your lead so, is incredible. Yeah, I mean, I, <laughs> yeah, it's, uh, it's I just want to see, Oh my God. I, I just, I, yeah, I, I'm just going to, I'm just looking at this. So you're community. number one with your second team at yeah. 943 points. Okay. Everyone remember 943 points. Your number, your first team is second at 879 points. Third place is 687 points with Hernan. Then 641, 615, 599, 598. Like, we're not even close right now. He's max. And you know what the nice thing is? You know what the nice thing is? is. I will say is even because you started, you started to see like Hernan, Hernan tried to emulate last week. Like I I saw he went as as close as he could to try to emulate. Yeah, but you're not going to catch up that way. What I've been doing. Well, I know you can't, right? Because I was going to say, because if you know, you're just copying what I'm doing. Well, you're just going to kind of be in line with with what I have in the future. You're so, going to lose at the exact there, there same will pace. Be, yeah, pot- potentially. So again, there. I think chip deployment is going to be important. But uh, yeah, I'm going to be more interested in watching kind of the the the, the bottom teams duke it out and to see uh, see who does what. Yeah, Kent Morrison is screwed. Because <laughs> yeah. he used his he chips, used, I think, he already. Used one of his chips on the first race. Dusty's teams are awful, and I still love that he never changed his team names. <laughs> team one seven one zero seven nine nine two six eight five five eight three eight four. Like, yeah, 
he's the Alpine of our group. Oh, and he's tried changing it too, <laughs> know, and he's, he's still not getting anything get done. It. Oh, well done. This is the first one in China. Was there were they in China last year? No, it's been. It wasn't there last. It's so this is the first, first one back yeah, since COVID. Back since, yeah, I'm intrigued. Cause I haven't yeah. watched. No, it, the, actually, none of us have watched the Chinese. If races. you go to, um, if you go to the uh, the website, uh, Kimi Raikkonen does a lap and talks about it. Um, it's very monotone voice with Kimmy. No way. Yeah. <laughs> but um, goes through the yeah. track and, and how it how it it's going to be. I'm looking forward to tonight. I, I won't lie to you. It's it's an interesting track for sure. I, I love night races. I love yeah. staying up, but I'm done with these. Get me the mornings again. I, I want to. I, I miss the expand. mornings. Yeah. I'm ready to wake up, brew a coffee, and watch the races. Cass is just waiting till December so he can hoist that trophy. That's all. So he gets three. Both trophies. trophies. He gets both. I know. Yeah. Right now he's uh, he's on both. Well, actually, both. you'd get three because yeah, I fought for this because you get yeah. first and second for drivers, and then you get constructors. Yeah. And it's the big race for yeah. third place yeah. in the in the drivers, which Hernan yeah, Salas so. is in lead, even though you're. Yeah, there's of, there's a lot of season left, guys. Stuff can still change. A lot of season left. We so. need you to blow a few. Yeah. Engines and stuff. And <laughs> hopefully, we could catch yeah. up. <laughs> Uh, hey, it's all about when you de- deploy that no negative chip too. Yeah, that's a big one. Do you stick around for the call, or do we bid you farewell? I don't know. Whatever what does Dusty do. do? I don't know. No, we, yeah, well, you're stuck here because you're with me here. right now. Both. You're stuck yeah. here. He's I don't know. If, yeah. I don't know if I'm bidding cast farewell here, both. or if we're gonna have you on the line while Zach can give someone a call here. You can bid me farewell. You can kick awesome. me off. Yeah, uh, well, me awesome. Out, and so. just he's got to work. You got to work later. Yeah, you've got the GCL Diesel pregame show. uh do you have I a do. prediction for yeah. tonight, or just who cares? <laughs> uh, I'm like, who cares? Um, eight, seven Oilers. <laughs> eight, seven. You know, that'd be a fun game. Uh, Zach, can you? Is there like a yeah. one shot of two guys? Because I can't figure it out here. Okay, you. Oh, there it is. Thank you. Well, Cass, farewell, and uh, we'll hear catch you on the post uh, pregame show later tonight. Absolutely, boys. And there's Matt Cassian. This is uh, two mats and a goalie. Matt Wanick walking gauge. Is, uh, we'll get to the uh, ESD flyaway qualifier right away here. Uh, he's got just such a lead. Like uh, I didn't, I didn't realize it was that much. I thought it was a he like did a hundred or something. He did a great job and of select. He went constructor. Yes, I know. He's hop. got Red Bull and Ferrari. Yeah, and that. Um, but I. But he doesn't have Max. No, and I, I know. felt dumb by not having a team without Max. Right? I had, like I had Max you, on one of them. How do you not have Max? It felt like going into this year. Well, Cass is showing you why. Well, yeah, but I mean, you throw the the three X chip on Max this weekend, and um, maybe and maybe he just dominates through qualifying sprint everything. Or maybe you All, just go limitless. Or you go limitless. But there's more sprint races, and we don't know what the old. MK has done to his teams. He might be holding it. He did something. I don't he think did he something. has. I he don't did think he something. Has. I think he's waiting. I, I don't think he did one anything. One of his team. I think one of his team, he did something. It's dangerous to Listening do. Listening to him. It's, watching him. It, it's, it's dangerous Why? to do. Why? Because. Like, there's two main chips, I think. There's the three times and Limitless. Those are the big. Those are the big two. But You, have you don't to. think Cass is trying to build his lead even bigger right now? Mm, I think he's playing it safe because okay. he has such a cushion. Well, I'm telling you right now, I'm doing one. <laughs> I might do two. I'm doing. <laughs> well, they're different teams. Yeah, no, I, I'm I not. Might, I'm doing one on, on each team, but they might not be the same for each team. No, no, that's that's good thinking. I would. Uh, I might play play both yeah. sides because I'm sitting in. I've got six seventh, but I could get. I could catch up. Yeah, I got double Hernan, and I can't let Lucas beat. Jeez, <laughs> Lucas beat. <laughs> Ah, uh, Zach, who do we got today on the line as a qualifier for the EST Flyway to Vegas? We got Chad on the line. Chad, congratulations. You are in the mix. Have you been to Vegas before? I have not. Thank you, boys, very much. Ah, you haven't been? You're one. You're like me. You haven't never been to Vegas. Uh, no, I have not. I, I love it. If you go, what intrigues you most? And, uh, you know, you've got uh, two months to book, but you got a year to travel. What would you try to maybe plan the trip to Vegas around? Well, I'd have to talk to the better half for sure, but I'm thinking we'd try to plan around an Oilers game next year. Love it. 
That's nice. The, they're, the golden, they're just so much fun. They're fun. They're great. Have you future. been to the? No, no, no. But everything okay. I've it, I've heard about. It, the Knights games are, are next. It's a level. show. Yeah. It, it, you get the game and the show yeah. with it. Uh, well, Chad, congratulations. You're in the mix. Uh, keep your phone on next Friday during the morning show because the boys will be giving you a call if you are drawn as the winner and you got to answer to be the winner. So, uh, like I said, keep your phone on and be ready for that call. Thanks, boys. Have a good one. Best of luck. And that's uh, Chad, your next chance to qualify. we got four opportunities tomorrow. Uh, the Nielsen Show with Lieutenant Eric and Walking Gage on the morning show tomorrow. we got the Hangout. we got Oil Stream uh, and Lock Shop in there as well. You ready for the morning show again? Oh, yeah. No, I'm, uh, I'm gonna looking gonna forward fun. to it. Zach Tecum is going to be doing the Sports Center updates. Perfect. It's going to be uh, it's gonna be a fun morning show, Beer of the Week. It's going to be great. I can't wait. I got uh, There's something special for Beer of the Week tomorrow. So it's- tune in. It's always fun doing a couple shows with you in a day. <laughs> I'm not going to lie. Uh, thanks for tuning in to Two Mats and a Goalie edition of Two Guys and a Goalie. Up next, it will be uh, the Nielsen Show replay. And a reminder, GCL Diesel pregame show. Tommy live on location. Hudson's on white. That comes up at 6 o'clock later tonight. On behalf of Zach, to come Cassian, Gager, I'm Matt. Thanks for tuning in. Enjoy the rest of your day.